Hello, it is Friday, February 3rd, and we're going to go over the futures markets for today and also see what we're looking for going into next week. So starting off here with the S&P 500, let me switch over to the five-minute chart right here, where we can see what's been happening. Obviously, market's been an uptrend, had a little, got up, a little pullback, and then up again. I mean, if you look at it, just using a purely Fibonacci levels right here pull back back to the 61.8 right here and then all the way up to the target spot right there for hitting for hitting that so that is the current area where it, where it it, it is uh, if you use this low right here you see price is just getting close right on the 38 percent where it's found its support right there and so you know what we would be looking for if the move continues up to moving up here to 42 39 and 25 cents based upon that but going into today, what we're looking for using the previous day's high and low, we're looking for the targets up is going to go down to the low side, down here to 41.26.25. Didn't quite get there when the market opened today. Uh, there was a sell-off that started, and or excuse me, right before the market opened, because actually right when the market opened, as you can see, the price just took off and went up and then came back down. So came close to hitting it, didn't quite hit it, but um, went all the way up, you know, past 61.8 and it came back down for two right at, right at the, uh, right at the open of the day, right down here is where it looks like it's going to finish up today. So pretty much today was just a range day in the market, even though overall in SP 500, it is down 1% today. One trade I was looking at, there was a couple I was looking at that never quite got filled today. Using this low and that high, you see price came and broke it down. So then once we do that, we start looking for a retracement to the 38% line going the other way. It, price came extremely close to here, probably close enough for it to consider this trade to be complete. But I don't look to getting in until price at least comes down to the 3.618 Fibonacci extension line. That's when you know price is really overextended. Of course, it still can go lower than that, but that's typically a nice solid area to look for. Um, didn't look like it came down there. I'm going to say this one's close enough to being done for it. I mean, it's literally, is that one tick away from it? Let's see here. The high of that is 41.59. That's 41.59.50, so two ticks away from getting hit, so good enough for that one to be done for that one. And then outside of that, there wasn't a whole lot going on here in the uh, S&P 500 for it. You can see what this pretty much had been on its way up and its way down has been a series of measured moves going up and down. Let's get back to there. There we go. So if we we just wait for the pullback, then we're looking for it. So there we go, down the pullback right perfectly down the 50% line goes up you can see hits a target area we're looking for right there and then if you just keep on moving it up using that using that low it looked like it's going to continue when it came to, when it re, when it retraced down here at the 38 bounced off there perfectly and the target we would have been looking for was right up there but that was not to be and then price just started reversing the other way as it went on today and so then if we start going down the other way we have there's the first retracement back to the 68 Back down to the target right there. And then we just keep drawing this lower. Back up here. That hit about the 78.6 um, Fibonacci retracement level down to the target. And then it really hasn't hit one since. The closest one. Nope, it hasn't hit one since. So we're just waiting for it to come back up there and uh, hit it again before if it's going to continue down. Going over to the four hour chart for the MFI to see the overbought oversold indicator. We can see it's coming off being oh, it's on down here. It's coming off being overbought down here, so we are we were looking for that sell off. So we'll see if that if that if the sell off will continue into Monday as the MFI continues to go lower. Because normally what happens when the MFI hits the overbought area up here, it goes down to the oversold, and then when it goes from the oversold, it goes to the overbought. So typically price kind of moves along with it. Because here was overbought, going down to oversold. There's the oversold level. Now we expect it to go up. Now it's gone up. Here's the overbought level. It's been going up. Keep going up. Then we finally had a little bit of sell-off right down here, but it never came back to the oversold level. So since then, it's just been going straight up overbought, back down in the range right here, and overbought, back down in the range, overbought. So, you know, if this trend continues for what it has been doing right over here, then we expect it to maybe go a little bit lower down the MFI before price continues. It's, let's see, it goes maybe slightly lower, 
and then for price to continue to move up. So it's been in a real strong uptrend ever since, what is that, about the 22nd of December right there for it. So we'll see if eventually, if there's enough selling pressure and knocks the MFI indicator down into the oversold territory, but on this, pretty much on this move up ever since this area right here, it hasn't been that. So until it breaks, we just expect it to go back here in this, in this middle area somewhere and then move on back up again. Here's the Russell 2000, kind of like the same thing for MFI. It's been tracking really similar, similarly to the S&P 500. Usually the Dow Jones is the S&P 500's companion, but this time it's been the Russell 2000 during this move. It's kind of the same thing. It's been an overbought to Taurus. Price has been going up, and then price has sold off. Hasn't reached the oversold territory, and so then went and reached the overbought again. Back down the middle, overbought, and that's back down in the middle. So if it continues, we expect it to go back down the middle somewhere right in here and then for price to move back up until it decides to break and an, an, another patter, pattern forms for that. Going into the day, this one, when you have that kind of like big move from the day before right there, it's not surprising to see this just be an inside day compared to yesterday. So it never even reached the outside targets we're looking for from right there to right there. See that about 1956 and then 2024. So never even came close to reach any of those today. So today it was pretty much just a straight up range day here in the market. And so we'll look for, especially next week, if not Monday, then Tuesday for sure, uh, some type of decent size move out of this because when you get these small kind of consolation days today, you expect a big move to happen uh, up out of it here in uh, the markets. And so if we go over here to the one minute chart real quick, again, pretty much same thing as SP 500, not a whole lot going on that we were looking for for it. The Dow Jones, Going over to the four hour chart, coming off being overbought. Um, this one, to see the Dow Jones has been different than both the SP 500 and the Russell 2000. Here we have it going from overbought. Never quite made it down here to oversold, overbought, and you had this big run up over here, and then it sold off to get down to the oversold level right there. Now it's gone up, being overbought again, and now it's starting to be a consolate. It's consolidating as the MFI has been going lower, so we expect the MFI. Uh, to go down into the oversold level down here. So it's still expecting more downside here in the Dow Jones. Going over here to the one minute chart to see if there were any trades set up for it. Uh, th this one was pretty much same carbon copy of the S&P 500 and the Russell 2000. If we were looking for that trade right there, price has come up, and did it hit it right here? Yeah, it hit it to be complete. So you can see, let's make this the pullback one right there. So we can see price broke out of it down there, but I wasn't looking to get in until price, the price came all the way down here, the purple line, but it did not. For some reason, it decided to make that the low of the day. Came back up there and hit the target right there at 33,991 for that trade to be over. And then outside of that is pretty much just chopped around here the rest of the day. Once you hit this once you hit this low area right there, then you have this higher right there. You can see price just been bounced around there ever since here for the rest of the day. So going into Oh yeah, and then I did want to talk about this. This is, this is came really close to hitting both of the extremes either way for it, but it did not it kind of did it kind of like a little peekaboo each way because as you can see, uh, there's the blue line right here showing that uh, this is the end from yesterday going over to today. So price came back down, had extreme bars moving down right here an hour before the market opened. It looked like it, it was going to hit the uh, outside target of the low range for what we we're looking for. It didn't quite hit there and then bounced around for a little bit and then just straight started taking off over there. And then look at this. The same thing happened here to the upside. Looked like it's going to hit the upside target for it. Did not hit it. Just kind of peaked up through uh, the high from yesterday. Just like it peaked down through the low from yesterday. And then sold off and bounced around. And now it's going to finish off over there. So pretty interesting day there in the Dow Jones compared to both the um, Russell. That was inside day. And the SP 500, which ended up slightly lower. But the Dow Jones, it went from just a little peekaboo to the downside, peekaboo to the upside, then sold off uh, again right there for it. And I think, yeah, there's the one hour chart. Now go over to oil. Oil has, um, well, excuse me real quick. There was, where was it? We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But oil, 
Uh, there's a new setup I'm looking at right now for oil over here that has provided a uh, good trade setup to get into right here. First off, we'll go to the MFI indicator. We can see from oil down here, it's kind of middle of no man's land. It's coming off being the overbought level. It rose up even more, and now it's been selling off ever since. So look for it to come down here and get in the oversold uh, territory down there. So still looking for a little bit more downside here in the oil market. But using this setup right here, this is a new one that I have started using for using the just the regular pitchfork right here. Uh, the lines that we have, the green line right there is the 6.85 Fibonacci extension level. And then the 11.89 is another Fibonacci extension level, uh, kind of like the extremes. You can see there's the 1.146, 3.618. 4.236 and basically all these except the 3.618 these are just Fibonacci numbers divided amongst themselves and 29.02 but I don't, I don't use that one for this one so how this trade works is you just use the let me delete some of the stuff all you do is you just use the the three uh, pivot points right there either the yellows or the reds it doesn't matter but it's just three consecutive ones and then what you're looking for is whenever price comes down and hits the green line which is at the 6.85 level you are looking to either go long or go short so it's hitting there looking to go long right there and then if it keeps on going down you can get in um, long again right here in the 11 I believe that's 11.89 in it yeah 11.89 level for it and then once it once it does that then the exits you are looking for if it hits the 6.85 for it like right there the exit you're looking for is the 38 percent retracement level and once it hits the um 11.89 then you can move the exit up here to the 50 percent 75.48 so for from this move currently right here you can see oil pretty much it was a straight down day it reached the top up here at at what is that at uh 78.01 and then just straight sold off it's pretty much look at that straight down the rest of the day no support at all for it and it let me show you one other thing right here if we look at using the previous days um, levels we're looking for look at this price came up there hit the target area that looking for for the high up here in between 7760 and 7821 hit that area but mainly the target being 7760 and then once it hit that bam sold it off all the way down so then once it hit down here you're expecting it price to get some support and pop back up, but it did not. It just kept on it kept on blowing through. It kind of hit the lower area of the target range. You got a little support there, but then just kept on selling off ever since. So today the bears ruled the oil market and um, and did that. So you know going into an oil for this week, look, it's been pretty much uh, in a downtrend. I mean, it's, if we're starting off right here, it's been it's pretty easy to see right there. Let's just draw that to there. And then draw that to right there. You know, look at that. Look at that uh, range right there. Look at the channel it's been in right there. So it's dropped out a little bit of the bottom side. If that's the true bottom side of the range right there, when we had hit the top or end of the range there today. Actually, we could draw that down a little bit. Maybe about right there. Hit the top. Sold out here through the bottom for so we expect it on Monday for to get a pop back up here in the price of oil, not just because that trade set up, but also it's in the bottom of this channel right here. So we do expect a pop back up here going into next week for oil. And the target we're looking for at least it come up to seventy-five dollars and forty-eight cents. It's currently at seventy-three dollars and twenty-two cents for that one. Uh, I was also looking at let me go back over to the one minute chart over here from the other trade set up right here never quite got down that low to it so you'd have to go all the way down here that 3.618 level 7062 so probably won't go down there and hit it this is probably be close to lows it could go down a little bit further but um, I am looking for eventually it to pop back up and let me see hit the where is it yeah about 75 50 ish right, right in that level right about there I'll just draw a little box make it easier to see you know looking for the target you know from where it is range right there going up over there going in into uh, Monday of next week then for the uh, Nasdaq we can look at it over here and we see Nasdaq's been a very very strong trend right here uh, you need here been over bought on the MFI just had a slight sell off MFI came down a little bit less than halfway it's again it's gone up again from being in the overbought territory had a little bit of a sell off um, from it 
uh, from it being overbought. And so we're looking for you know, if I continue to move down at least to halfway, you know, we expect eventually to go down here to the oversold. But as from this last move, we went it down a little bit less than halfway before it popped back up. So we, we expect at least to go down the MFI down a little bit more, but would prefer to go down all the way to reset down into the oversold territory so they can move back back up in it to overbought again. So wouldn't be surprised for the markets for the downtrend to continue at the early of next week. And then uh, for oil, for oil to get a pop back up next week into the mid into the middle of the 75s into at least $75 and you know, about $75.50, assuming it didn't drop too much further down here because the lower it goes, we just keep on drawing. Let's get rid of that. We just keep on drawing the Fibonacci retracement level lower, but we're still looking for it to go in into at least the $75 right now, about the $75.50-ish uh, range for it. But for the rest of the markets, we're expecting a little bit more downside for it. And then this is for NASDAQ. This is, a, you can see it's just inside day compared to yesterday's market. So we look for, for more volatility for it going into uh, next week for that one as well. So that is the market wrap up for Friday, February 3rd. Have a great weekend. Thanks, bye.